Good morning. Welcome to Tuesday, April 14th, 2020's devotion uh, taken from Acts 13, verses 26 through 33. I don't know if you know this uh, or, or have realized this. Some of you probably have, others uh, maybe not. Over the course of, of um, the church year, so to speak, the church doesn't just celebrate Easter on Easter Sunday and then let it go. No, the church rejoices in the resurrection of our Lord for six weeks following Easter. For seven full weeks, seven Sundays are dedicated in the church here to celebrating Easter. And there's good reason for that. Not only do we focus on the account of Easter as we do on Easter Sunday, but many of the Sundays after that, we focus on Jesus appearing to others after his resurrection, whether that was still on Easter Sunday, in the cases of some, or uh, within the 40 days after Easter, as in the case of other uh, visits with people. Today we're going to take a look at, uh, once again, the apostles, well after Jesus has ascended into heaven. Acts 13, verses 26 through 33 says, Gentlemen, brothers, sons of Abraham's family, and those among you who fear God, this message of salvation has been sent to you. The people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize him, and by condemning him, they fulfilled the statements of the prophets that are read every Sabbath. Though they found no grounds for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. When they carried out everything that was written about him, they took him down from the cross and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days he was seen by those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. These same individuals are now his witnesses to the people. We are preaching to you the good news about the promise that was made to our fathers. God has fulfilled this promise for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is also written in the second Psalm, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Is the resurrection a hoax? You, you hear that word a lot, don't you? Is the resurrection a hoax? Is the resurrection fake? You might think a lot of things are fake in today's world. You might think some of the news is fake. You might think some of uh, things other people tell you, maybe even friends tell you, are fake. You may even be struggling with things that are uh, being talked about this virus. But is the resurrection a hoax? You know, that's what the disciples were really struggling with. Not that they were thinking that the resurrection was a hoax, but instead they were running into people who were thinking that the resurrection was a hoax. As Peter did on Pentecost, at Pentecost um, Paul here showed how God's gracious purpose was carried out through the evil action of the Jews who rejected and condemned Jesus. In verses 17 through 25, we see them talking about the nation of Israel and how the nation of Israel, um, the, the, the Jews, uh, and the history of Israel uh, carried out the, the plan of salvation and what God did in the history of Israel to carry out that plan of salvation. In verses 26 through 29, which we read this morning, it talks uh, about how the Jews, ignorant of who Jesus was, 
um, and ignorant and unbelief did to the Savior whom God had sent. And in verses 30 to 39, Paul continued the history of God's saving work. And do you realize that in Acts 13 here, this is now the ninth time in the book of Acts that they have talked about the resurrection, the plan of salvation. And it wasn't always Paul, and it wasn't always Peter, but it was all the apostles. So once again, as I said yesterday, either they all are really good liars and have the same story, or this is exactly what happened, and they saw it. You know, it, it talks about the scriptures being read every Sabbath, being uh, fulfilled when God raised up Jesus. God sent him, and we know that because God acknowledged him at his baptism. God equipped him for the ministry. God accepted his perfect life and innocent death. And God certified that all by raising him from the dead. This good news is good news for all. Paul makes that clear to his Gentile readers in, in that day. He makes it clear to us, and Scripture makes it clear to us. It's not just for the Jews. It's not just for Germans or, or Norwegians or Asians or one certain group. But it's for all. Is the resurrection a hoax? Of course not. We have, first of all, plenty of evidence in Scripture that it is not. But even beyond that, when you take a look at Scripture as a whole, and you realize that when you take Scripture as a whole, and not just tear one little verse or one little phrase out, that Scripture in its entirety agrees with itself. Written in over um, about 17, 1800 years, from the Old Testament to the end of the New Testament. That's amazing. No contradictions, just the unaltered truth. Dear Christian friends, nine times up to Acts chapter 13. Nine times we've talked, they've talked about the resurrection. This was a big deal. And it's a big deal for you and me. Because, you know, we're always trying to run from death, right? That's kind of what we're doing with this virus. We're, we're kind of running from death, trying to run away from it, trying to Keep away from that. And yet, what does life always end in? Death. The only cure for that is Jesus Christ. His cross and his tomb. He saves us. And he gives us a new life with him in heaven. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We'll continue by singing hymn number 160, This Joyful Easter Tide. There'll be a uh, short introduction, and then we'll join together in singing. Please join me in singing if you are comfortable. This joyful Easter time, away with sin and sorrow. My love, the crucified, has sprung to life this morrow. Had Christ who once was slain, not first his three-day prison, our faith had been in vain. But now is Christ arisen, arisen, arisen. 
but now is Christ our reign. Death's flood has lost its chill since Jesus crossed the river. Lover of souls from hell, my passing soul deliver. Had Christ who once was slain, not first his three-day prison, our faith had been in vain. But now is Christ arisen, 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 but now is Christ arisen. My flesh in hope shall rest, and for a season slumber, till Trump from east to west shall wake the dead in number. Had Christ who once was slain not first his three-day prison, our faith had been in vain, but now is Christ arisen, 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 but now is Christ arisen. Why don't we join together in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the comfort and the hope of Resurrection, we thank you for giving us the multiple witnesses of the resurrection that you do in Scripture. We thank you for giving us the, uh, the confidence of resurrection, the confidence that you actually did rise from the dead and that you, through your life, death, and resurrection, give us that uh, eternal hope with you forever in heaven. We ask you to instill that wisdom and, and comfort of the resurrection in, uh, in us that we may... Uh, willingly and joyfully share that news of peace and joy with others. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Certainly wish you God's blessings today. Um, pray that you are all doing well. Uh, hope to see you soon. Uh, remember, uh, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God's blessings. <laughs>